Hi, my name is Ashley Bluer. I am the AV Preservation Specialist at Artifactual Systems. Um, today I'm going to talk through some of the ways in which I, working as an analyst supporting Artifactual's clients, investigate issues related to the service and how I attempt to resolve them. This isn't necessarily comprehensive, and there are other similar ways that one may choose to do these things, but this is a basic guideline. So feel free to customize as you see fit and as it pertains to your job title and to your organization. In fact, this talk is targeting a wide audience, from command line familiar archivists familiar with Archivematica, to IT specialists unfamiliar with the entire field of digital preservation. This talk will be broken into three parts. This is part one, technical introduction. We'll go over the purpose of Archivematica, a technical diagram, and supporting technologies that we use. And we'll also talk about the format policy registry. It helps to first talk about the actual goals of Archivematica and how these goals are categorized and accomplished. These goals are based on the OIAS framework and it's a way to think about how to preserve digital assets over a long period of time. It's more than just moving files into long-term secure storage. These are some of the other actions preservationists take and care about while preparing these items. First, we ingest, so we take in all the files we wish to preserve. Then we verify that the files are what they claim to be, and we perform identification actions on those files. Then we want to characterize these files. The step is also known as metadata extraction, and we're gathering information about the files and storing them. Then, potentially, we arrange the files, although sometimes this happens prior to ingest. If we want our files to have consistent, standard, open formats, we may want to normalize the files. Then we can add descriptive metadata and finally package the files and store them as APES and DIPS. APE is for preservation assets and DIPS are the access copies. That lingo also comes from the OIS framework. It means archival information package and dissemination information package, but you can think of them as preservation and access. So now I really wanna begin by talking through the Archivematica technical diagram. This perspective this perspective also underestimates a few things. For instance, all of the microservices that we use to process SIPs, that's another OIS term. It means submission information package, or what you want to ingest, and also our format policy registry, which manages the commands and rules for these microservices. But from a systems administration perspective, this is a good overview of how all of these portions of Archivematica work together. And this also shows the relationship between a systems or storage administrator and the Archivematica user, the actions they perform, and the different services that they end up working with. The next I want to talk about the supporting technologies. Archivematica is built on open source tools, and these are some of the main tools that we use. We use Python programming language, Django, which is a web application framework that's built on Python. We use Gearman for scheduling jobs. We use MySQL as the relational database. We use Elasticsearch as our search index. We use Nginx as uh, our web server and Gunicorn, uh, which is an interface between Python and Nginx. We also use Git for our version control system and for deployment and configuration, we offer Ansible, Docker, or Vagrant options. And all these tools run on top of Linux on a server commissioned by your organization's IT department, unless you're an Archives Direct client. We support Ubuntu, CentOS, and Red Hat. The part of Archivematica is the format policy registry. In it, we have tools to perform preservation actions, rules to determine when to use the tools, and commands that are applied to files based on rules. All of this is managed by the user, but I mention it because it highlights many of the microservices and dependencies that we use in Archivematica, and some of these versions of these tools are contingent on the server and the version of Linux that's being run. The tools are divided into these categories, and some of these are brought into Archivematica during installation. Uh, we have identification, which is Fido and Siegfried. For characterization, we use FITS, FFprobe, Media Info, and Exif tool. Uh, then detail, we use a Linux-based tool, Echo. Extraction, we use 7-Zip and the Sleuth Kit. For normalization, we use FFmpeg and ImageMagick. For transcription, we use Tesseract. For validation, we use MediaConch. And for verification, we run some simple scripts 
uh, locally just to check if the file exists and if the file size is greater than zero. All of these microservices use different programming languages. For instance, Fido is built in Python, Siegfried is built in Go, and MediaInfo and MediaConch are built using C++. So lots of languages make up lots of tools that we manage and package into Archivematica. There are more tools outside of the main technical stack that I just covered, and I'll briefly mention them here. Automation tools allows Archivematica to be used without a user interface with preset configuration files. Fixity is our internal checksum management tool, and we manage our own packages in the deploy pub repository, and our Ansible roles are highlighted in the highlighted repository below. Experimental additions to Archivematica can be tested in the Artifactual Labs repository. And we also have some DevOps tools, Ops Helpers, and DevTools. All this to say, this technical stack has a lot of dependencies, and a lot of dependencies can mean that there are potential points of failure. We work really hard to avoid and mitigate those points, but digital preservation is complex, and the tools we depend on may not always act in the ways we want or we expect them to. So that's all for part one. Stay tuned for part two.